Welcome back to High Tech Farmer. Today, I'm going to be planting some unreleased and brand new seed genetics of corn out in one of our fields. Here are some of those bags that I am talking about. These are unreleased genetics that we'll be testing out in our field. And a lot of them, some of the bags are unopened, but because some of the seed is super limited, so it's hard and hard to find. Some of the bags have already been opened and been placed at other test plots. So we have a total of 18 different varieties and a couple different brands on this palette. And then over here, we also have a couple other brands and genetics that we're going to be testing. So those are DeKalb and Pioneer. And then over here, we have some Stein corn and then some Latham corn as well. I believe some of these are short stature corn, so it's not like an eight, seven foot tall corn plant. Some of these are like a five, six foot tall corn plant. This is kind of the plan we have of all the different varieties. I also wrote down the four Stein, the one Latham. So in total, I have 23 different varieties and a couple different brands that I'm looking to plant. The actual planting of the plot becomes a little bit of a logistics question because we already have all of our other cornfields planted. So the plot is in the middle of one of our existing cornfields. And I need to make sure we left enough room to plant all of these specific varieties out there. It's not showing up on this screen, so maybe I can use this screen, but because I don't have GPS right now, I think that's why it's not working. So we'll back the tractor or pull the tractor out of the shed and see if I can figure that out. We have the GPS now that we need, but for some reason, it's still not giving me any of the work data to show me how many actual passes we skipped. I basically need to see a map like this, so we'll go look up in the office. Here's the map I was more or less looking for on the tractor, but it's still not showing me how many individual lines we have left. But I believe, yes, there is a way I can drop a ruler from that point down to that point, and it should tell me Right here, that is 600 feet. A little back of the envelope math tells us 600 feet divided by our 60 foot planter means we will be able to make 10 rounds with the planter. With the planter being 24 rows wide and the entries being 12 rows, so I'm only gonna get two entries per planter pass, that means we only have room for 20 entries. Since I'm not gonna have room for all the different varieties that I was hoping, we're gonna have to end up cutting three out. And since I'm a loyal DeKalb customer and the district reps are coming from DeKalb to help us plant the test plot, it kind of be rude not to plant their seeds. So I'm gonna decide which of the two Stein bags I'm going to plant. We'll call the district rep here in a second. I'm not gonna, oh, I'm not gonna plant the Latham, but look at the brand on this one. Or look at the, look at the label on this bag. It says, hi. Tech. Spelled exactly how I spell high-tech farmer. But we'll call the Stein rep, ask him which two he would recommend of the most. Calls it, that, that one is a 98 day and that thing's got a good trend, so that's the one for sure I wanted to ground. Ah! Wah, wah, wah. Ah! I got him in there though. What are you wanting for a population? Whatever the rest of the farm is. 35? 35. Okay. Oh. <laughs> you know we finished planting 10 months earlier than we did last year? 10 months. <laughs> <laughs> or two months, two months, ten months ago we were planting. Yeah, mm -hmm. I was say, yeah. Uh -huh. We had our little rendezvous there in the yard. I believe we have everything figured out now, so we'll head out to the field. Now while they start loading up our first two varieties out there, I'm going to start switching this over, getting our varieties all plugged in here. That way everything maps correctly and we can track it all season long. Make sure our population is set correctly, which since this is corn, we're going to want to go back to 35,000. That should populate on here. Yep, right there, 35,000, so we're good there. It always, always make me nervous doing this when people are out there watching. I mean, when it's my family, I'm not nervous, but when somebody outside my family watches me plant, instantly I get nervous. Why? I don't know. It just happens because I feel like I should be the master of this machine after running it for hours and hours of spring and it never feels that way when somebody comes and watches. And it looks like one of the rows is maybe unhooked. Well the one row that wasn't planting very well, I think the problem is this is some really, really small seed. Unfortunately, all the plot seed is different sizes so it makes it hard to set the planter when you got two different sizes of seed, 
on both sides, so I'm just gonna back up, we'll try the best we can. I fiddled with the screens and the numbers a little bit. I got the singulation all the way up to 99%, so that is good. I don't like the pressure that I feel planting when four people are standing at the edge of the field watching me and, oh there, for some reason this chair wasn't turning and that was bothering me, but seems like we got it dialed in now. All of these entries are an actual half a mile long, so this plot's gonna take a little bit amount of time. It's definitely good for the data entry point. Hopefully I can talk to Jacob. He can explain a little bit more about what all this data is used for and how we as farmers rely on this data to make decisions going into the next seasons. That's what I am. I'm gonna try to be. Now we're back in the cab and painting two more new varieties that we're adding. This is a 97 day and a 96 day. In total, we'll have 20 different colors on here when we're done for the 20 different varieties. In between every different variety of corn that we're planting, they need to suck out all the seed that was left over from the last variety, so that's what they're doing is sucking out the previous variety seed. Then that goes in these shop backs here, which are really noisy, and then we just dump in the next one. It's basically what it takes to run do a test plot. It takes a little bit of time. The data is definitely worth it. Now entering the last two hybrids that we need inside the display here and then we will have the plot finished. It's crazy to me to think as we just finished our test plot here all the millions and millions amount of hours that go into producing one single kernel of corn like this that we use as seed corn. All the data, all the chemists, all the biology, everything that goes into it. It's crazy to think about, especially as they just went across, planted 20, 20 different varieties, a bunch of different scientists that go in behind each individual kernel. Blows my mind. Now that we are done with the test plot, we are done planting corn, hopefully, and we're gonna want the planter sitting empty in the shed, so we'll clean this out one last time, and that way it'll be nice and empty in case we need to replant anything. Now that that's over, I really wish it rained about a half inch, that way I could have the rest of the day off, but unfortunately, that's not the case, so we gotta figure out what's next. With the crop all in now, obviously we need to get all of the equipment cleaned up that we used this spring, but that is more of a rainy day project. First, we're gonna head back out to the fields and do my least favorite job, which is, let's see if you can guess it, pick up some stinking rocks. One other thing we'll get to do today with planting being done now is I bought myself an end of planting gift. So if you stick around to the end, we'll get that opened up and I'll show you what I think is gonna be a pretty cool addition to the farm. Sorry about that, almost got you guys on that one. I know what you're thinking, man Matthias, you must have been good at that claw machine at all the Walmarts when you were growing up. Yeah, I was. Now that the rocker picked up, it's time to open up the gift I got myself for being done with planting. With planting over, I figured I'm gonna be spending a fair amount of this summer checking crops. So the thing I got here is going to help with that. Uh, so here's what I got myself, a Hobsco electric moped slash bike. The thought is I'm gonna use this a lot on the farm when checking crops. It can go 60 miles on one single charge, max speed of 32 miles per hour. I'm definitely excited to test this thing out and see all the uses we can have with this on the farm. Once I get this bike fully assembled, it will hold up to 450 pounds. So, as well as I've been eating out in the field this spring, I'm still under that 450 pound threshold, so I'll be able to ride and drive this, as well as possibly bring along extra things out to the field if need be. Instruction manual here of how to put everything together, but I think if I just, ah, here we go. Whee! 
So you're probably thinking, yeah, the first fully electric vehicle at our farm is a bicycle. So my thought process behind this was, there's a lot of times here at the farm where we need rides from different fields and we're just short staffed on just when we're moving equipment from different fields and don't get me wrong, ATVs, side by sides, they are great, they work perfect, but they're not as easy and convenient to load up into the back of a truck as this 130 pound electric bike. It has an electronic display showing the miles per hour, the odometer. One thing I really like is that if I don't feel like turning the pedals, I can just turn up the passenger assist to a five and it'll drive the 20 mile per hour without me ever needing to spin the pedals. The controls are super easy to run if I want to increase the speed of the battery. I just hit the plus, if I want to decrease it there. Then it's got a throttle that drives it forward. Also right now I have the blinker on, which I think is super cool. It has all that functionality while also still remaining a fully operational bike with seven different speeds can obviously use the pedals and chains and not use any of the electronic assist. So if I do want to get a good workout in while checking crops, I still have that option as well, or just have a regular Friday night bike ride, it can still do that. I am also considering bringing my e-bike along on my drone trailer, that way, fingers crossed this never happens, but the drone falls out of the sky and I'm in a pasture or in a field where I can get to it. Rather than walking what could be a half mile taking 10 minutes, this would cut that time down to two minutes. If you think you need to be high tech to run it, well, let that of dad being driving it be proof that anybody can have a Hovsko bike. Link down below in the description if you're interested. I'd strongly recommend it. I plan to use it a lot on the farm in a bunch of different ways, which I'll cover all throughout the season. With that, that's all for today's video of High Tech Farmer. Thanks so much everybody for watching. We'll see ya in the next one.